Hi everyone, it's Andy from Hobby Headquarters. Well, I've been gradually going through all of the uh, tons and tons of model car kits that we bought in the big giant collection that you guys have been watching. And in this box right here, I have something special. In here is the oldest model kit, actual true kit uh, that I've ever seen before. And I want to share that with you guys today. So this is going to be episode one of our, calling it like our museum series, where we take all the kits that are going to go eventually in our little uh, model museum, and I'm going to share with them you, you today the, uh, the cool stuff that's inside this box. So, let's get started. And here we are guys, here are these really, really old kits. And one of them is going to qualify, as the title says, as the oldest kit that I've ever actually seen before in person. And it's got to be one of these right here, and, and I'm going to explain what I mean by that. So all four of these are made by the Monogram Company, which you know Monogram has been around forever, clearly. Uh, Monogram was started in 1945. And we have some kits that were produced, at least begun to be produced, in 1946, which is this kit right here. This is the Monogram Jet Racer, the Hot Shot. And it's partial plastic, but primarily a wooden model. Uh, remember, this is the 1940s. Injection molding was not like it is now. So this is the first kit that has a copyright date of 1946 on it. And then we have the TerraJet. Now the TerraJet is actually their kit number R2. This is kit number R1. So this would be their first kit to come out with, and this would be their second. And this has a copyright date of 1947. Now as we tear into these kits, there are going to be different levels of, of age on each one of them. So the first thing I'm going to do is pull out the the R1 kit. I actually don't believe this is the older of the two kits here and I'll explain why. So as we open it up, it's a very, very, um, very, very nice kit and in really, really good condition. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you this right here. And this is the monogram uh, little catalog that came in. it. Now, if this monogram catalog came in it, this is a 1959 catalog which if it came in this particular kit, I mean, it could have just been shoved inside this box and, you know, stored there, but if it's pretty old, as you can see. So if this came in there, that would put this at a vintage date of, you know, the late 50s and maybe even into 19, the early 1960s. And what we're going to do is we're going to break this kit apart and show you. I really start to wonder if these did not take rocket motors um, please, if you know any more about this, please put a comment down in the, uh, the comment section. These kits right here appear to be able to put a rocket motor inside there and blast them across. You can see it's a, a chunk of balsa wood that is kind of shaped to the, uh, <laughs> the shape that it's going to turn out to be. And we have plastic wheels. And they're actually like a rubberized plastic. We have the uh, vacuum form canopy and then we have the individual pieces of balsa wood that make up the, uh, the you know the accessories on here and finally we have the the metal uh, axles that would go right up inside there I don't want to damage the wood in any way but you can see how those would go on and then you just put the uh, the wheels on top of that and uh, as you can see here they're only one actually you can't see what I'm telling you is there only one side of this page is printed and you can tell by the top here where the burning of the paper is you know, that lets you know that this is this has been sitting around for quite a bit of time did notice though once I did open them up that this uses a co2 cartridge to uh, to propel this car so you do it like a like a line like a uh, control line airplane did you could do the same thing you put the little hook on the bottom and do a control line car not quite sure how the co2 cartridge worked how you you know started it uh, I'm picturing the co2 cartridges that we had as when I was a kid in the 70s that you know you'd have for the BB gun that was a little cartridge that you'd pop it uh, but 
I want to know how this would work that you'd be able to pop it, get it on the ground, and still be able to control it. But very simple instructions. You know, you get this piece right here. And, oh, this is something else I found inside there. I don't know if this was part of the kit, but there's a, a sheet of sandpaper inside of here, too, from the Imperial Sandpaper Company. And I wonder if this is the, the entire piece that came with it. Seems kind of odd that there would just be a random piece of sandpaper that the person who bought this kit would have put in there, but... It may have actually come with the original sandpaper. And also, I found inside the instructions a set of decals. Very old decals uh, for the Hot Shot Jet Racer, number 33. And basically, you took this, took that sandpaper, and started carving away until you hopefully came out with something that was very similar to this here. Here we are, guys. Here it is. This is the kit. The Monogram TerraJet. This is the kit I believe is the oldest kit I've ever had. Uh, held in my hand, seen, whatever you want to call it. But it's in my hot little hand right now. And I believe when I show you the insides why I think this is the oldest one. But before we do that, we're going to take a look at the box. Copyright 1947. And this is a beaut. This is in really, really nice condition. All the way around. But let's look inside. That's that's the best part of all. So first of all, there is a sheet of sandpaper inside here. So that must be a thing. They must have included a little sheet of sandpaper to get you going. Because uh, you do have to shape the entire piece, basically. I am going to come back in a few minutes and show you the instructions. But this is what I wanted to show you. Look at this really old piece of advertising. And... This what's this is what makes me believe it's the oldest one because when you look at all the pieces on here, they're all balsa wood. There are no plastic, full plastic kits at all on here. So we have the, the line of jet racers. We have the line of airplanes. And then when we flip... Now, all of them do have some amount of plastic parts in it, which this particular kit will as well. And then we have a line of, of ships and the super kits and they're all balsa wood including those ships so you can see here we have I'll let you read that as well with me 16 inch model and contains detailed plans fully shaped balsa hull and templates so yeah this has got to be late 40s very very early 50s if not late 40s I mean is this I don't know I'm I'm super Super jazzed about this. This is so cool to see this in here. I mean, this is 70, 70 plus years old. This is definitely museum worthy right there. And inside here we have our little bag of the, uh, these are the, the shafts that the, uh, the wheels would go onto. And then I found out late also too that these little pins are how you make it a control line. We have our vacuum formed canopy. And then the balsa wood tube here. So clearly there was a lot to do on this kit. You got our little fillers here, the wing, and finally another block of balsa wood. Another sheet of sandpaper. Our decals for the TerraJet. And we have our plastic wheels inside. And then our metal axles. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put all this to the side and then I'm going to open up and show you the instructions. Here they are. And first off, they're single side page just like the other kit we showed you. Nothing on the back printed. Um, the general idea that they wanted you to come up with once you uh, got all that blocks of wood and tried to glue and sand them together. Construction tips and a lot of burning on this paper here. You can see up here in the corner and in here. So yeah, I'm definitely thinking this is uh, late 40s, early 50s uh, print of this particular one. So what do you think of that? I mean, is that cool or what? Uh, when you think about today, when you get a plastic kit, kit and you complain about, oh, well, this doesn't fit together or anything, think of this. This is what you got right here. You got a, a wooden tube that was hollowed out, 
and a couple of blocks of wood and some sandpaper and said, here, here kid, go, ahead, go to town and build this out of it. So very, very, very cool stuff. Uh, and definitely this is all going in the museum here. And I've got one more thing I want to show you. Something that makes you think back to the, the 1940s and what it was been like to be a kid and been building models back then. Now we have here a really old TerraJet box. But inside that is not a TerraJet. It appears to be the hot shot that you know, I'm assuming it's a child based on, you know, the you know, way it looks right here, but here it is. This was probably put together in the late 40s by some kid. And he went and put the wheels on. Looks like he just nailed them into place, did all the gluing and stuff that he needed to. We've got our fin right here. The louvers in the front. Here is a 70 plus year old vintage toy that, uh, I don't know, I, I, I get a kick out of looking at this stuff. To think about some kid sitting back in the 1940s. World War II had just ended. You know, America was about to go through a huge, you know, boom. And we've got this right here. And this is something that they would have been building up right here. Before the plastic model kits, he, the canopy's not on here. Um, it's really basic, but he put it together and just probably had a blast doing it. So there you go, guys. There is a quick look at uh, some of the oldest kits I've ever, ever had in the store here. I'm going to put all of these aside. These are not being sold. These are all going to be put aside to eventually do a model kit museum. And I think all four of these kits are going to be a great great uh, display for it. Oh, one other quick thing too. I found this in one of the the other kits, the, the third kit, the other third TerraJet kit. Some more advertising and look at the way it's been. Is this cool or what? Probably from the 1950s. I get a kick out of old advertising. I think it's really cool to see, you know, it kind of reflects of what was happening at the times there. But that too will be added to the museum. And before we finish up this video, I'm going to show you this kit on the top there, that PC-51, the Firebolt. Uh, and this is from the original 50s catalog. Well, here is, a, now this is a reissue. This came out in the 90s. But this is the exact box art uh, that was in that original 50s kit. So you get an idea of what the kit looked like. And this was a plastic kit, though, so a little, little bit different. Well, there you are. There is our first episode of our museum-worthy kits. And I want to thank you guys for joining me on this. I think these are some really, really interesting kits from Monogram. Obviously very, very old, at least 70 years old. And uh, just, just great to take a look at what it was like to be a modeler back in the 40s and 50s. So I want to take this opportunity to thank you as always for watching. And please stay tuned because we have many more videos coming.